Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Franchise Everything Podcast where we talk about everything and anything franchising. You might be out here in the background, maybe, maybe not. A um, bit of buzz there. We're actually at the National Franchise Convention held by the Franchise Council of Australia in Melbourne. And I'm joined by Tom Elliott, who again, actually, who is the CEO of Hogsbreath. G'day, Tom. Not, not sick of me yet, mate. <laughs> no, I'm not sick of you. Never sick of you, mate. <laughs> Good to be saw, here. Thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, mate. I saw you wandering around upstairs. I said, let's let's have a chat. Right? We've got the podcast studio down here. So, you know, we've talked about a bunch of things directly and related to Hog's Breath, but when we were talking about Hog's Breath stuff previously, you were telling me about hospitality technology, new equipment, all this sort of stuff, because you've been on some overseas tours and a lot of research into new tech um, as part of your role there at Hog's Breath. And we're going to do something on, was it five? We're going to look at five main trends and insights yeah, and Yeah, highlighted five. Highlighted five. So, um, yeah, you're right. Obviously, we're seeing the hospitality industry change quite dramatically and quite quickly, right? Yep. Um, and a lot of stuff that we're seeing at the moment that hasn't really landed domestically or we've seen little bits of domestically Um is, so is, is massive equi- over there in states and Europe right now. Many equipment and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, number one would be back a house, right? So uh, the evolution of smart kitchens. So looking at equipment right now, uh, and what does that look like moving forward in a QSR or the hospitality space moving forward? So um, you know, robotics in equipment, kitchen equipment, is booming over there in the states and in Europe at the moment. So um, we know domestically, labour is through the roof. We don't know mm. where that's going from a cost perspective. It's probably the number one issue, I think, outside of driving top line revenue in our business yep. um, so it's looking at smarter ways to repurpose that and if I can take a chef away from back a house to do the deep frying of, of curly fries for argument's sake uh, and have some support and some systems in place there that help me um, I can repurpose that to, to front a house mm. or, or, or other areas of the back of house so uh, back of house equipment and, and what's coming by way of robotics um, would so be when you say robotics I think Terminator <laughs> um, <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking yeah, about not, robotics not, not what does as, that look like not as sophisticated as that, but you might have some uh, uh, automated robotics around dropping off the curly fries. Uh, that's timed, right? And then it brings it back up. Um, I know in a previous business, we were looking at what we could do around our donut robot as well uh, to sort of automate automate that process as well. Um, mm. So it's not really, you know, the, the iRobot it's, it's of the world and the Terminators around. of the world, uh, back I, to house, I dropping I do it. see though... Um, <laughs> What is it? There's a, like a dumpling restaurant near me up on the Gold Coast. You live on the Gold Coast as well with a little – with a robot sort of running around with it. So, you're, you're starting to see little touches of this. Yeah, correct. I mean, you know, um, I took my family to Sushi Train the other day and they love it because you've got the little robot that comes out there and delivers, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the prawn rolls or whatever it might be and it's yep. that theatre around it as well. So, it's coming. We're a little bit behind the rest of the world but it is coming and I can see that navigating into back of house domestically. So, did you see much of that when you are in the US? Like actually seeing an action in any restaurants and stuff like oh, that? Oh, bits and pieces. I mean, I wasn't uh, as back of house as I was front of house, I must yep, admit. But uh, yeah, you do. You start to see bits and pieces of it. And there's a couple of brands over there that are starting to do it really well. We talk about what Wendy's are doing over mm-hmm. there in the States from an AI perspective uh, from that's consumer facing. Yep. Um, Chipotle is also doing a, a fair bit over there as well. But mm. um, yeah, it's coming, definitely. Okay. Next trend. What, what do yeah, you Yeah, number two. I think it's uh, from a data perspective, having the whole ecosystem at your finger pe- uh, fi- fingertips. Uh, and I suppose what I mean by that, there's a lot of platforms out there that franchise partners are looking at at the moment to analyze their top line revenue, uh, their loyalty metrics, their labor line, their COGS line. But that unified approach to it, and we're looking at some technology at the moment that would bring all that together um, to speed up efficiencies for franchise partners. And I've just come from uh, a multi-unit synopsis up there yeah, as upstairs, well. Yeah, upstairs, uh, yeah. With Greg Nathan, and they're talking about how they could fast track a lot of these uh, day-to-day activities that take franchise partners a lot of time, mm. particularly across multi-units. So having that one ecosystem from a data perspective that that uh, brings that data to the to the forefront is going to be super important. Um, we've just engaged a, a company domestically here that's going to look at all our ordering processes from a cost of goods perspective. So we'll see obviously the labour line come in, we'll see the cost of goods come in, and we've got a dashboard at the fingertips that helps us with menu engineering. It helps mm. us with pricing analytics and all that type of thing. So number two would be a, a one fits all or, or, or fit for purpose ecosystem around data. So for someone like you in Hogsbreath there, how long is the transition and change for that? You still assessing it or how does that work? I think you've got to be careful at mm. the speed that you move because particularly in our network, we've got a lot of franchise partners that have been in the system for years. Um, so they're used to their ways, but um, it's the same with anything that's technology based at the moment or AI driven at the moment. If you ignore it, you're going to get stuck in the past. So or if you jump in too fast, you're going to end up with something that correct. is obsolete in 12 months. Correct. So you need mm. to you need to be measured in your approach, but at the same time, uh, it's coming and yeah. uh, we, we need to have our, our uh, eyes on the future. So. Yeah, excellent. All right, number three. Yeah, number three is about sustainability. 
Now, sustainability isn't just about packaging um, or the message that you put on your coffee beans. Uh, we're talking about energy sustainability moving forward. So, mm. again, um, you know, cost of power, particularly in this country, is rising. Um, you see it on the PL lines. Uh, we, we are one of those fortunate franchises, ORs, that uh, manage to see PLs monthly from the from the whole system. Um, so, we can see what it's doing to the bottom line of the PL. Um, so, this is about infrastructure from a uh, uh, efficiency perspective, mm. whether it's electricity or power or whatever it might be um there's a lot of stuff happening over in the states and europe at the moment uh, to help with that so what what sort of things are looking at is it is it changing equipment over or is it the way that new new equipment is made i mean because it like you see you know uh new devices come out new new watch comes out or whatever and the battery powers whatever is that is that the type of evolution you're talking about uh, all and then the it above. takes time for it to be able to come yeah, through before all you can the, all change the energy above. And then we talk about you know data again, having the ecosystem and being able to see when you're at peak levels or when you're at low levels in your efficiency as well, mm. particularly around power. Um, and there was a, there was an app that I saw over there in the states that was particularly of good use for that to manage your labour levels or manage your your production levels efficiently. Um, mm. So all of that stuff's coming and sustainability, not just within your packaging or within mm. your uh, remit of your products, more so around your your back of house operational equipment. Yeah, because that 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 power stuff is a real creeper, isn't it? You don't. I, I can imagine the days, um, you know, the days when you go to places and the lights were on everywhere. You know, building out the lights on all over the place. Yep. It was that's just the way it was. And now everything's dark. You walk in. I mean, I suppose it's auto switches as you come in, which is great, which is doing. But um, it's certainly obviously top of mind for many people. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, number four. Predictive Number maintenance of your equipment. Okay. Um, I used to run 55 restaurants uh, across the country that were corporately owned. Uh, my worst nightmare was the coffee machine going down in a Gloria Jeans on Boxing Day or the donut robot going down in a Donut King on Christmas week. Yeah. Um, you can and prepare- dropping, <laughs> dropping 40%, 50%. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. You can prepare for a lot of things in the retail and hospitality environment. You know, lack of staff, lack of stock. You can you can alter your, your product mix and your labor mm. mix uh, to, to cover for those. Uh, but if a key piece of equipment goes down um you know you 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 you're really in trouble you're screwed and and those stores don't have the ability for redundancy like to have just correct. a second coffee machine or a third coffee machine sitting there ready to go. Yeah, correct. I mean, you, you wouldn't rock up to McDonald's and, and be without a Big Mac, would you? So yeah. um, it's those those key IP pieces of the product mix that are super important. So uh, predictive maintenance. So um, imagine your equipment can speak to you and would tell you when they're in a bit of strife and operating at 50, 60%. We're seeing a lot of that technology uh, start to land here domestically. It's been used in Europe and the States mm. uh, quite a fair bit. Um, so for us, being able to deploy that so that, you know, if it's an oven or or if it's a grill in a hog's breath uh, mm. environment, um, we don't want one of those going down. That's going to cost us 40 or 50% of our product mix yeah. and our revenue for the day. Um, so, so being able to get ahead of the curve. Are you talking retrofit Yeah, for this sensors, thing? beacons, those type mm. of things. Um, having the data at your fingertips, again, through a cloud-based app um, so that you can see maintenance schedules, you can see uh, the output of, of certain equipment and sh are they operating how they should be. Um, so predictive maintenance is a big one that I think brands will start to invest in and franchise partners will start to invest in more so uh, again, just for downtime mm. and efficiency purposes. That's interesting. When, when you said to me before this predictive maintenance, I don't think it really registered what it was because obviously we have preventative maintenance. Yes. That is the manual maintenance of stuff according to its manufacturer's warranty specifications. But yeah, this is a whole different thing. This, this is about identifying the risk upstream so mm -hmm. that you can do something proactively about it to um, exactly avoid the the scenario that we just spoke about, which mm. was uh, a donut robot clonking out on Boxing Day uh, when you do 2,000 cinnamon donuts to go out the door. Yeah. Um, so it's about getting ahead of the curve type scenario. Excellent. Fifth one. Yeah, the last one is is obviously consumer centric. So how AI is playing a role in the guest experience, um, and we know it's evolving rapidly here. Um, but what what we did see over there in the states, and there's an example out of uh, Asia as well. Uh, I'll give the Wendy's AI partnership that they've done with Google uh, mm -hmm. for their drive through location. So um, obviously they're allowing a lot of repurposing of labour uh, by taking voice orders um, and, and moving the traditional sort of drive through uh, type scenario that we, you would have uh, domestically here. Um, so whether it's number plate rec recognition, voice recognition for that repeat customer and those new customers. So um, we're seeing that over the state, over in the states around drive through. Um, the big one that really sparked my interest was what KFC have done in China um, mm. and Everyone knows the self-serve kiosks. They're pretty commonplace now here yep. domestically. Um, but in China, you can go up to a KFC um, and it's got facial recognition. You can smile by paying. 
at the camera. <laughs> so uh, the face is recognised and it's linked back to an Alibaba account uh, or an <laughs> Alipay account. Um, and it, it, it learns your face, it learns your order. Um, and what they're also doing is uh, recognising demographic, age, gender, and then being able to predict certain elements of the menu that you might want to consume. Um, so that's stuff that's happening in Asia and overseas. Uh, it's only a matter of time before a brand brings that over here domestically and uh, we'll start to see some of that cool stuff happen. As we know, technology mm. from a customer perspective is evolving so rapidly. I don't know if it's cool or scary. Um, a bit of both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how do you see that playing out in, in your space? So you're, you're a, quite a different experience. How do you then – because I suppose from an executive perspective – you're supposed to have the vision and everything like that. How do you then take all that information and bottle it and say, right, let's adapt that for us? Yeah, well, you don't. I mean, all of these. Types you don't of want the dining experience to become um, something that it shouldn't be. And by that, I mean people comes to Hog's Breath for our hospitality. It's for mm-hmm. that customer service. They expect a certain level of expectation. Um, so they want to be able to have rapport with their server. They want to be able to ask questions and have a bit of banter. Uh, but equally, we know that the new generation that's coming through is very tech savvy uh, and they want seamless um, sort of transactions from a customer perspective. Um, so it's getting that front of house balance right. Mm. And then back of house, it's about educating our franchise partners that yes, tech can be scary, um, but ultimately this is here to save you percentage points off your P&L. Mm. Uh, and everything that we're bringing through now is with that balance to make sure that you can still get smooth operations. You can still uh, make sure your restaurant's firing on all cylinders, but can we save you 1% off your power line or one percent off your labor line mm. or by getting some of these initiatives in play uh, let us take a look at that as a franchise group and then and then roll that out so is your plan potentially to um when a new store is coming online to really unleash a little bit of some of this stuff and then use that as a test prove, proven yeah. case like a case study and then present that yeah absolutely i think um you know corporate locations are obviously a very good mm. vehicle of that but um we, d- we do need some franchise partner buying as well so uh new locations absolutely there's got to be a bit of uh tech enabled sort of systems and operations in place um because we want to set those restaurants up for the future um mm. so you know there'll be a bit of retrofitting of that back into the the existing network as well and you've seen a fair few of our locations yes. now Ailey Beach and and Cleveland's of the world. So uh, new tech into restaurants that look, um, you know, sort of 5, 10, 15 years old um, is going to be pretty pretty interesting to see how how that adapts from a franchise partner perspective um, and then also a customer perspective as well. Excellent. All right. Do you want to throw in any more insights or are you no. happy with those ones? No, no. I that's think it. that's it. <laughs> that's a lot. All right, Tom. All right. Thanks, thanks again for joining us, mate. Appreciate Thank it. You. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed that one. We'll catch you in the next one soon.